This episode is brought to you by Indie Film Hustle Academy, where filmmakers and screenwriters go to learn from top Hollywood industry professionals. Learn more at ifhacademy.com. Your next film was uh, a bit of an upgrade from the $8,000, um, which was NARC. Um, how how yeah. did... how? Because there's a... I remember there's just a lot of stuff swirling around NARC. I remember when NARC came out. And because it was then right. during that time, we were still like it was on the tail end of the whole Sundance kind of craze, which was when Tarantino and Rodriguez and Smith and Linkletter yes. and Spike and Singleton, all these yes. guys were coming up. So you were on the tail end of that, like in 98 with Octane yeah. and then NARC came out. So and NARC um, exploded onto the scene. I remember people were like talking about it left and right, like, oh, my God, this is right. like revelation. This is the next big thing. Um, and and I will get to that part, but man, I heard other stories about like the making of it and the money behind it and a lot of craziness. Is, can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, dude, it was, listen, it was one of those, it was one of, the, and this is the way that a lot of these independent films are financed. They're very, uh, listen, there's anytime there's, anytime there's millions of dollars, you're going to have people in there that want to siphon off a certain amount of that. And, 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 uh, and uh, it's like the skim in a casino, you know, it just is. And if you say if you think that you're dealing with, you know, these honorable sorts across the board, you're dead wrong. You know, you're not, you know, you're dealing oftentimes. I mean, one of the guys on there was like literally gone to prison uh, uh, he, and he was I think he was he may have been like I, I think at one point he was like trying to reach out for me from like, you know, like the Baker Denver Row cell block, seat, whatever the hell it was. It was like, wait, wait what? This guy's so it was very <laughs> it was. And I remember. You know, they were they would we'd say to the you know, the, the, it's like, hey, man, we didn't get the wire. And it's like, oh, oh, you know, um, OK, look, we'll send it. We, we just got to find the number. And then they and then they and then they call us back and go, oh, we can't remember which bank we made the wire with. And I'm like, guys, you're doing the adult version of my dog ate my homework. This shit isn't isn't funny. You know, we've got a crew we have to pay. And, you know, we're in we're in Toronto in like the dead of winter. And I remember walking onto a set one day, this kind of really uh, run down little one bedroom apartment. I, and I remember I, I remember walked in and there's the production manager. And I turned the corner. I hear him say, I don't know when you're going to get paid again. I don't know if you're ever going to get paid again. And this is 7 a.m., you know, before we shot any, you know, and I just listen. I just decided the, the best way to deal with the situation was just to take the bull by the horns. I said, guys, listen, we're dealing with disreputable people and people that are kind of sleazy. And you have mortgages and you have, you know, car payments, and you have kids to feed. I can't tell you how to do that. If you don't, if the money's not here by the end of the day, you should walk. I would. And I think for whatever that was worth, it galvanized them for a moment. And they kind of, they understood our, our plight and they hung in there. Um, but dude, you know, it was, it was a movie that could have very easily kind of disappeared and just been this cool little, you know, but I remember going to the Eccles theater, which is still the best screening I've ever had of, the, of a movie. And it just went through the roof. And I remember right after that, they took myself and Ray and Jason Patrick up to the main street of Park City and put us on uh, put us on CNN Live. It was great. Right. And I thought, OK, that was something happened. And um, and then, you know, kind of post that coming back, Lionsgate, Tom Ortenberg, who I'd made three films with, who, I, who picked up Blood Guts. They uh, they uh, um, uh, it started this whole there's like, you know, the, the Bel Air screening circuit is basically a euphemism for rich people that have, that have theaters in their homes. And so I started meeting all my heroes, Dustin Hoffman. And I remember like, just, just meeting everybody, all these great, you know, and one night I'm having dinner with Ortenberg and Jason Patrick. We look up and Warren Beatty standing there. He just came down to like Banderas on Barrington and Wilshire just to hang out and talk about the movie. And, and it was just this crazy. And then, you know, I get the call that, you know, Tom Cruise has seen the film and he wants to meet you. And and I go to Cruise Wagner. I'll never forget it, dude. And I'm in the conference room, and I didn't realize the, the the main entrance had a little latch style lock, and it was locked. And suddenly the door just starts trembling, trembling, to like shaking, shaking, and then just pulls open. The lock flies off, and there's Tom Cruise. And 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 we start talking. He goes, he was dating Penelope Cruz at the time. And he goes, listen, she had a family member that had she she I knew she walked out of the movie. She covered her eyes and left the film. And he goes, I knew it was as good as I thought. As good as I knew it was great. And it was a great movie right there because she couldn't bear it. And and uh, and and then, dude, and you know, listen, he got that film a tremendous amount of uh, attention. notoriety yeah. and attention, and and really rescued it from being. It could have just been this little three million dollar indie that you know was cool and 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 disappeared. And he really made it 
kind of bigger than the sum of its parts. And and for that, I'll I'll be always be grateful to him uh, for doing that. You know. Yeah, and 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 that's not something that Tom does very often. Like he hasn't 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 like. Um, Shepard, a an indie, you know, an independent or a very, you know, much lower budget non-studio film like that. I don't remember. He might have no. done a couple here and there, but I don't, I don't remember him doing that. It's not what he no. does. Yeah, no, he was really. It was something else, man. It was something else to kind of. I don't think I was aware of how of how extraordinary that was, you know, yeah. uh, for me to experience. And uh, and and only now as a much older guy, I go, you dumbass. <laughs> You know, it's like you idiot, like you thirty-one year old jerk off. He didn't really know what the fuck was going on. It's like, you know. By the way, please shut up. You know, if I could time travel, if I had Doc Brown and a fucking DeLorean, I go back and slap the shit out of myself. Shut the fuck up. Not everybody needs to know what's on your mind, bro. Shut up and lose twenty-five pounds. That's what I'd say to myself. You know? Cause I'm, cause I'm feeling it now. You, you, you fat. Yeah, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, everything's your pain in the ass, dude. Nobody likes you. Shut the fuck up. You know. So, uh, so, so, uh, no, it was, but it was, it was remarkable, brother. It was one of those like, just kind of amazing moments in time. And and uh, and, you know, the movie came out. The movie did what it did. It was. I think it was. It was obviously it was. It was successful in in as in so far as it was one of those movies that got. Listen, Paramount put a, put a, put Oscar money behind it and. Mm-hmm. Did a campaign for Ray, did a campaign for the screenplay, did a campaign. You know, it was it was great, dude. It was really something else.